All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. We're doing a little collaboration episode. This is your boy Brian, aka El Nino. Today I am joined with. So normally, right when we do Zero Dark Nerdy episodes, I do the whole, you know, Captain Cleveland, Browns, Cavs, Indians. Them fucking Indians are on fire right now, but early, because. This is a crossover episode, and I'm technically representing the water cooler. I'm going to say that my name is Ryan Saba, the most electrifying voice in sports information, and with me as always. What up, what up? It's me, it's me, it's Lukey C, a.k.a. The Crockpot. What, uh, what are we talking about today, fellas? What are we talking about, b -Hern? So, you know, the 99 Club came out from Madden. Um, obviously, we're in the middle of COVID, so hopefully we have a football season. If not, Madden's going to be pretty much all we have. So uh, we're going to talk about the 99 Club for this year. Um, you know, maybe some snubs, some people that should have been on there. Probably go over maybe some of our favorite Madden games and, uh, you know, just sports games in general. I like it. I like it. Don't forget, we're going to talk about guys that are overrated, and I think – there may there may be two on the two on my list on that picture behind you. Oh Lord, I knew that was gonna happen. But we'll Interesting. see. I got I got my stats to back that shit up. Oh, though, I'm so. sure you do. <laughs> you wanna go ahead and uh talk about the, the who's on the ninety nine club for this year? Also, yeah, before we I can, get into you it, know, um, I do wanna give a big shout out. Yeah. One of the members of the ninety nine club is uh Christian McCaffrey, Carolina's very own, and big shout out to our boy Jex who was uh, invited out by EA to do a yes. cool little mural for them. So if you go to the EA website or check out Jex on uh, Instagram, you can actually see his amazing uh, portrait that he did of Christian McCaffrey. So sorry to interrupt, but go ahead. And shout out to Christian McCaffrey, uh, his wife, bro. Like, like play on play. Like I could, <laughs> I, like I, I was looking through Jex's stuff and it kind of took me down a rabbit hole a little bit. And I was like, I want Christian McCaffrey's married. Oh, oh, he's married. So check that out for all you guys <laughs> out there. Um, you know, let's talk about the 99 club. I think one thing that's really interesting, I, I think Madden does it right. Um, there shouldn't be more than one guy rated at 99 at any position. And I think they do a good job of doing that. I think, you know, it's, it's a status they're doing it there. You know, you, you saw this year, and I think this is the first year that they did it where they sent out the kits and had the teammates surprise them with the 99 club thing. So mm -hmm. I think Madden's really doing it right. If you look at who's in the 99 club this year, you got Pat Mahomes at quarterback. You got Stephan, uh, Stephon Gilmore at cornerback. You got um, can't guard Mike, Michael Thomas at uh, wide receiver. You got, you know, Christian McCaffrey, like we talked about, run CMC. And then we got just the absolute beast – uh, beast of a man, um, Aaron Donald at, at defensive tackle. Uh, is there anybody that you guys think that maybe isn't on that list uh, that, that should be? Because I got a couple guys that, that I was thinking about. Did somebody say playoffs? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. That's right. NBA, Major League Baseball, and NHL are in full swing, and our partners at Bet Online have you covered. I'll tell you what, after that last Mavs and Clippers game, my money is definitely going on the Mavs moving forward. That team is young, dangerous, and hungry. So take full advantage of sports being back and get in on the action with hundreds of odds, futures, and props for you to bet on. And there is always the online casino as well, as it never closes. So head to betonline.ag today and sign up to receive your welcome bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's betonline.ag and sign up today. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. Luke, you want to go ahead and take this one? Yeah, I'll start. I'll start. I've, I've only got one on in this category for that. Um, you know, I am a big Michael Thomas guy. I, I think you guys know I'm a Ohio State fan. I'm just not sure that he's the one guy at that position that should be there. Um, <clears throat> look, the guy is incredible. He had an amazing year last year. We have like 1,900 yards. Um, he's been good for a while. He's good. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is uh, I think it's got to be Julio Jones. I just think that he's he's the best receiver in the NFL. Um, I know there's there's always a thing. He, he doesn't score touchdowns. Um, I think that's 
I think that could be a little bit fluky, although over the course of a 10-year career or how long he's played in here and he not yet to have a, a double-digit touchdown season is kind of surprising. But, mm-hmm. you know, Thomas only had nine last year. I think Julio had six. But, uh, I mean, I, I, to me it's just Julio is the only guy that I could think of. And I kind of agree with you, Say, but when you say one guy from each position, I definitely get that. Um, and I think we'll talk about this in a little bit about just how many total guys. So I'll save, I'll save that take. But Julio is really the only guy that uh, I think, you know, I, I'm, I don't have a problem with any of the other guys there. What do you think, B? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I really do agree with that. He's, he's the most consistent. I believe he's coming off of, what, six straight thousand-yard seasons. Oh, you know, looking at his numbers now, Michael Thomas uh, did have, you know, what did lead the league in receiving with 1725. Julio right behind him with 1394. And, yeah, you know, the touchdown thing is fluky because, I mean, you got guys like, you know, Kenny Galladay and, you know, Cooper Cup with 11 and 10 touchdowns, but their yards aren't as good as those two guys. So, I would agree. You know, I, I think Julio, he's hovered around that 99 area for Madden, but he always seems to get stuck on 98 and 97. It would be great to finally see him break through. Um, I would have liked to have seen him add a tight end to this. And my thing is, of course, you're going to have to compare like Kittle and Kelsey, um, both monsters of that position. To me, if I have to choose one to, you know, tight end to get in the 99 club, I would definitely pick Kelsey. He had 1,229 yards last year. He was number four wide receiver in the league, number four. So kill I mean, it, kill it, Trav. <laughs> yeah. So and you know, and he, then he had the five touchdowns. So that that to me is really my main snub from the ninety nine club. It would be great to see uh, you know a tight end get get a little bit more respect than that. I mean, he's still rated very very high. I believe he's a ninety. I think in Madden, 96. Kittle. Yeah, Kittle is a ninety seven or ninety eight, and Kelsey's right below him. But uh, that, that to me is really just my main snub is not seeing a tight end. Whether If either one of those made it, I, that would have been great. But, you know, if, if it had to be one, I would have gone with Kelsey. Killetrav from tight end U. Uh, Cincinnati is, is, is a good one. He is uh, an Ohio native Cavs fan, uh, friend of show. Uh, Look, I like Julio. I think he's a good player. I think you just saw maybe yesterday, right, like players in the NFL – um, yeah. voted him as, as the best wide receiver. I think you could probably make an, an argument for DeAndre Hopkins as well. Um, but the three guys that I really looked at were, you know, Bobby Bobby Wagner at middle linebacker. I think that, uh, you know, Bobby Wagner has been, been a really, really good player for, for a really long time. I think he's one you can look at. Look, J.J. Watt is still Red Grange. He still can dominate a football game. Mm-hmm. His health has been a little bit of an issue lately, last few years. Like, he's um, a guy that I look at. And then no, no love for the, for the big heavies. I mean, I think you could take a look at maybe a guy like Zach Martin, uh, rank him at 99. There are no offensive linemen at 99. So I'd like to see, um, you know, a little bit, little bit of love there. Yeah, I don't disagree with with really any of those. Um, the thing is with with tight ends, though, I just didn't think, and I'm glad that they don't just take a guy from each position. Yeah, so right. I am I am glad that they didn't just put you know Kittle or Kelsey in there. Not that not that I'm, I'm actually I'm going to say yeah, I don't think they're deserving. Not that I think they're bad, but you know I think those guys are in that 98, 97 range. Um, you know, neither one of them are, are, are Gronk, and that was really the gold standard. And yeah. Probably the best tight end of all time, so maybe that's too high of a standard to hold them to. Uh, but if you don't have a 99, you don't have a 99 at that position, so I don't have a problem. I thought about offensive linemen. I went through them, and Zach Martin was the name I saw. Um, I just – I don't know, man. I just I, – I couldn't find anybody that really just, like, leapt off the page to me. And uh, as far as Bobby Wagner goes, I'm okay with – I mean, he's a really good player. I'm just not sure. I, I, I'm okay without a linebacker, and I'm okay without a safety on there too. So no, I'm good with it. I, right. I just those are guys that I could look at. You know, when you when you take a look at sort of the the best guys at their position, yeah. I think those those guys sort of stick out to me. Um, you know, there's there's other guys, right? But maybe they're just not there yet, right? Like a, sure. like a Miles Garrett or. Um, you know, anybody, I mean, I don't want to go down the road and starting to call out, you know, but that, that takes us into, you know, underrated, overrated, you uh-huh. guys want to do the good first or the bad first. I, let, let, let's talk about the guys that are underrated. Maybe the guys that should have been rated a little bit higher that weren't and just a couple thoughts there. You know, as far as ones that I would have liked to see in a little bit higher, I got, I got to be a uh, – let me not start with that one. You know, Tyreek Hill, I think, is a monster. You know, he's definitely hovering. He's a 96, so it's not like he was rated terrible. He did miss four games last year. 
But I, I would not be surprised if Tyreek Hill is in the 99 club next year. Uh, besides that, you know, my, my, my boy Fletcher Cox doesn't seem to get a lot of love. I mean, he's rated a 96, but, you know, he held that defense down last year. We all know how terrible the NFC East was. Don't get me wrong, but somebody had to come out winning. And, you know, we won against a very healthy Dallas team to make the playoffs. And, then, you know, we can attribute a lot of that to uh, my boy over <laughs> here. It is <laughs> over here behind me, Fletcher Cox. Besides that, um, you know, I, I do think there's a couple people, and I'll, I'll kind of just go back and forth here that, that got maybe a little bit too much love. Um, you know, to me, Devontae Adams, I, I, I don't see him being a 94. To me, he's more of an 89, 91. Uh, there's just not much, you know, I know, Luke, you talked about flying off a page. To me, he had a pretty decent year last year. I believe he had 970 yards, so almost had 1,000 yards receiving. But, you know, I thought 94 was a little bit high for that. And, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what I got. I would have liked to honestly seen um, uh, Chris Jones actually get a little bit more than 92. You know, I think he's, he's one of the best defensive tackles in the game. I would have liked to see him get be more in the, the upper, you know, 95, 96 area. So that's kind of what I got as far as rankings. And I don't, I don't want to get started on Carson Wentz. We'll save that for the end of the show because I got so much <laughs> to say about that. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I got, I got two on the underrated list. Um, <clears throat> number one for me would be uh, talking about the big heavies. Is Quentin Nelson in a 94? Um, I, I'm not sure that he's not the best guard in the game. Um, right. Again, I know it's not a sexy thing to talk about, but that guy, that guy's insane to watch. He's fun. And I know, uh, I know I saw like, some of the stuff on Twitter about uh, Cam Hayward, you know, gave him a little bit of the business last year. And that was a good game. But, you know, I, so I, I'm with Quentin Nelson. I wish he was a little bit higher than 94. And then uh, – do a little Greensboro love here. Keenan Allen, uh, you talked about tw uh, Twitter a little bit. Yeah. Um, they, they went back and forth. He went, he went at it with, uh, I think, Mike, Mike Evans. Mike Evans. Chris Godwin. Yeah. Because he, cause he, he tagged was... the wrong Chris Godwin. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not sure he's the best wide receiver in the game like he thinks. I love the confidence. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think he's every bit in their class. And, you know, I think he might be better than Mike Evans. And I think it remains to be seen on Godwin. But – you know, 91, I feel like he's definitely low. He, he should definitely be a little bit higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. Right now he is number 10 on the Madden list with, with a 91 right behind Evans and OBJ and, and stuff on digs too. I thought got a little bit too much love last year, to be honest. Oh, I'll with get you. into that. So did you yeah. do Luke, did you do, did you do, you did underrated first, right? Yeah. All right. So for me, you guys talk Mike Evans. I think Mike Evans at a 92 is really underrated. He's rated the same as Amari Cooper and, and Stefan Diggs. I think he should be at a 94 with Devontae Adams. I do think Devontae Adams should be ranked that high. Uh, Devontae Adams is a really good football player. I think Deshaun Watson at an 86, I think he's rated way too low. Uh, is he a 99? No. Is he, you know, low 90s? I think maybe 92, 93. I think you'd be hard-pressed. There's, there's, in my opinion, there's only – five quarterbacks in the NFL that are better than um, Deshaun Watson. And, and one of them is not a guy that is on my overrated list. So we'll get there in a minute. Jack Conklin, Jack Conklin of the Cleveland Browns. He's ranked 78. You know, he needs to be probably in the mid eighties. I'm reading a note here. I, I don't know. I, oh yeah. I, I wrote a bum like Derrick Henry. <laughs> um, so, so Jack Conklin made a bum like Derrick Henry win the rushing title last year. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, when you look at some of the guys that I think he's in the same category with, you know, you got guys like Mike McGlinchey, you got guys like Trent Brown, you got guys like Lyle Collins who are, who are all up there in the mid eighties. And I think he's every bit of in that category. And the last guy, um, you know, is Cam Newton. He's ranked 78 right between Baker Mayfield and Josh Allen. Right. Um, I think he needs to be a little bit higher. Look again. Does he, you know, is, is he, you know, a 90? No, probably not. But I think he's in the mid, mid 80s. I think he's an 84 and 85. I think he's a guy that's right up there with, with a Deshaun Watson where they have Deshaun Watson ranked. Um, but, yeah, those are the guys that I think are underrated. Luke, who you got that's overrated? We can start. You want to talk about the 99 club guy that's overrated? Who you think, Stephon Gilmore? No. Uh, it, it's it, is Christian McCaffrey. It's simply, what? simply wow. because of his position, okay? I just don't think the position warrants anything that, that makes it that important. He hates um, running backs. 
<laughs> well, you know, just real quick, he is he the hate, first running back. No, no, no. He hates running backs. Oh, well, no, but he and also is problem. the first running back to get a 99 rating since AP in the Madden 25 game back in 2014. So it's been a Here's while the since a running back has gotten 99. Yeah, and look, don't get me wrong. The guy is incredible. Had a great season. He, uh, you know, produces as a receiver. So he is, there is a lot of value there. Um, just not sure that we'll see. We'll see if it's sustainable. I just don't think that, that these types of seasons are sustainable. Um, we talked about it on our quarterback rankings with Lamar Jackson a little bit and, you know, sustainability. So we'll see. I just don't think that those, those type of numbers are, uh, are sustainable, but um, coming out, coming out next week, by the way, yeah. quarterback power ranking second annual at WC sports by the holiday your boys. And for one more, we'll go overrated. I'll go, uh, Cooper Cup at an 89. I, it's not it's not a terrible overrate, but uh, you know, I, I just I know he had 11 or 10 touchdowns where he said last year, and I don't I just I just think everything in that offense is manufactured. Be here. Um, you got anybody else you want to touch on that's overrated, or you want me to go ahead? No, just real quick. Um, and I mean, it's it's no surprise. I've never really been a big fan of this dude. I still think Richard Sherman's overrated with a ninety two. Ninety two, absolutely. No, uh, no question. Yeah, I, I think it's absurd. I mean, we saw in the Super Bowl exactly what can happen to that guy. And mo- mo- and we all know this. Most cornerbacks are great because of the system that they are in. I'm not saying San Francisco has a bad system. He had a phenomenal system in Seattle, which helped him shine. But, you know, on one-on-one situations and the quarterback actually has a couple seconds to throw the football, that man, does, hey, he's been getting torched for the last couple of years now. So I think 92 is a, is a little high for Sherman. I'm going I'm to go, you know, upper 80s at the most, like an 88, 89. But 92 for Richard Sherman I thought was uh, incredibly a, a big stretch, to be honest. He had, a really good, he had a really good year last year. Now, look, we saw the Super Bowl. Super Bowl was not great for him. He does have trouble with um, those smaller speed yeah. guys because he is a bigger guy, and he's getting uh, he's getting up there in age. But he but he had he did have a really good year last year. Just you no, know, it's tough to defend all those guys in Kansas City. I mean, yeah, lots oh, of people God. that's what I was going to say. Guys. Most corners have trouble most corners and safeties have trouble with the four by 100 uh olympic yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, relay team <laughs> which, no, I, which is what they got yeah um, but i don't have a phone there but for me overrated uh i, I talked about a bum like derrick henry i think derrick henry at 93 is the guy runs upright he takes shots he's not going to be around a long time you know, he, 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 huh the rushing leader. I thought you said the running backs matter. He's the rushing leader. The only reason that he did, he won the rushing title is because Nick. Look, Nick Chubb's the best. Is is whatever. Don't even get me going there. But he's a ninety three. I think he's somewhere. You got you got Aaron Jones at ninety. You got Joe Mixon at eighty nine. I think that I would probably put Derrick Henry at eighty nine. Lamar Jackson. He went from seventy six to ninety four. I get it. He's the cover athlete. You know, guys. Let, let's pump. And, and Luke's going to say it. He's the MVP of the league. Da, da, da. Let's pump the brakes on Lamar Jackson. Um, the league often has ways of, of auto-correcting. See Robert Griffin the third. You know, I, I, I think let's, let, let's pump the brakes on him a little bit to put him on the cover of Madden and rank him. Huh? How many times did he lift the MVP trophy? Because we're talking about a big difference between rookie of the year and the MV- and the league MVP. He won. Didn't he win the same amount of playoff games though? <laughs> <laughs> um, my next guy is Fletcher Cox at ninety six, three and a half sacks, ten quarterback pressures, pretty pedestrian stats for a guy who's supposed to be, you know, a, a quarterback pressuring defensive tackle. Do I think he's in the nineties? Sure. I think he's 91, 92, somewhere in that range. I think that um, just 96 is a little bit too high. You know, you talked about Chris Jones. I, I think Chris Jones is every bit the player that Fletcher Cox is, and they had him ranked at a 92. So, you know, that's – you know, I put him there. I mean, last I, I not, Last it. but know, not it, least. Yeah, no, his, his number – oh, I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. At 84. Ooh. Guy that's never won a playoff game. Guy that really doesn't stay healthy very often. Um, doesn't really make his teammates around him better. Uh, he had one good half season, um, and that, that's Carson Wentz. I, I, mean, knew, I, I think fucking knew it. You got you got Baker Mayfield, seventy eight. Uh, you got Josh Allen 
at 78. Why are you talking I, about those two? They're not on the same level. No, I think those that two I are not think, anywhere near. No. Wait a minute. And never even this, had close to an MVP on. caliber season. Hold on. Hold on. I'm using them as a barometer. Okay. <laughs> Why? They're not close. I should have just I mean, brought Josh the Allen won a playoff game. Over here. You know? I think No, that, he didn't actually. He lost. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was my Deshaun Watson argument. I would put Carson Wentz probably in the 80, 81 range. I just think that um, he's just – look, he, 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 you know, we talked about we had our quarterback ranking. I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, I think based on, based on what I said there, listen to that, you'll get – look, I've been wrong about a lot of players in my time. I've been wrong about a lot. I'm not wrong about this one. Fool's gold, baby. Fool's gold. I tell you, man, Car- Carson Wentz is the Rodney Danger feel of the NFL. You know, no, he's he get, he gets, that's not even true. He gets, he gets no respect at all whatsoever. All right. He threw for 4,000 yards last season. Not a single player on that team had over 500 yards receiving. First off, led the team to the playoffs, got knocked out by a cheap shot from a uh, fuck shot. bag in Seattle. Just went Today straight diving down, down in the helmet. That wasn't and I'm not cheap. saying we would have made a deep playoff run. I'm not even saying we would have won the Super Bowl. But you got to understand, too, the guy is a number nine rank, like, as far as stats go. He's ahead of Patrick Mahomes as far as yards and touchdowns. So he's not that terrible. I mean, I'm looking at the stats right now. Carson Wentz has 4,039 passing yards. Mahomes has 4,031. He threw one more touchdown than Mahomes. He's got 27 and 26 and only threw seven picks to Mahomes' five. So you're talking about – Super Bowl MVP, guy that led his team to the Super Bowl, guy that led to his team to the playoffs with a practice squad. I mean, come on, to give the guy an 81-82, I think that's incredibly unfair. To do what he did with very, very little last year, if that was any other quarterback, everybody would have been like, oh, well, his team was trash. And, I mean, yeah, he was working with practice squad players halfway through the season. And before he did get hurt on our Super Bowl run, that guy – if he would have stayed healthy, he would have won an MVP that year. His, his numbers were phenomenal, and that's why they signed him to the contract they did. So I think with healthy players, I, I guarantee you we'll have a different conversation next year. And, yes, of course, the knock on him, will he stay healthy? He, he stayed did. healthy last year. And they like went I said, eight yes, the NFC East And they was lost terrible. another playoff game. Well, you know, and the NFC East was terrible, but we still beat a very healthy Dak Prescott, who's in a lot of people's top ten list, and a very healthy Cowboys team, you know, along with Fletcher Cox. Again, I don't think Fletcher Cox gets that much respect because, yes, his numbers were not great last year because he got double teamed a shitload because we had a lot of injuries on the defensive side. So it's going to be a lot easier to double team a guy like that when you don't have Chris Long, when you got uh, Barnett hurt. You know what I mean? So, of course, his numbers aren't going to be inflated as when you have to worry about that almost hockey-like line that the Eagles were rotating in and out when they, were, when they won the Super Bowl that year. So that's just five, you know. five of their eight wins came against their division. Right. Two of those teams picked in the that they won four games against picked in the top four. Um, we also lost, I believe it was five games by seven points or less. And three of them would have been won if Aguilar knew how to catch a fucking football. Like Aguilar. <laughs> like Aguilar. <laughs> look, we can, can this this Carson Wentz debate is gonna rage on because oh, yeah. I'm oh, yeah. well, oh, I'm, I'm never a report on this. I won't be wrong here. <laughs> trust me. T- t- history will show that I'm right. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, and I and I love Bake. Bake brings a lot of entertainment on the field, but you can't rank him higher than Carson now. I so. didn't. I know. Just I just saying. used it as a barometer. <laughs> it was just a very bad barometer. <laughs> you know what? Um, and nobody loves Baker Mayfield more than me. Bullshit. You You're a fucking fraud. <laughs> All right, let's move to. So before we got on the uh, on the mic here, I told the guys that I pulled up on good old ranker.com. They have the Madden list, you know, as far as best to worst. So I'll go over. Let's just we'll start with the top five and go from there. So number one is Madden NFL 2004, the one with Vic on the cover, which to me it's one of the more fun Madden games. But I love that they had number two be a Madden NFL 2005, which is the one with Ray Lewis on the cover. Because I don't know if you guys remember this, the defensive schemes changed drastically yeah. by the time they got to the Ray Lewis cover. Yeah. And uh, that's when a lot more people started focusing more on the defensive side of the ball than just – running NFL blitz type packages on, on Madden games. 
Number three, we got Madden NFL 2008. That's the one with Vince Young on the cover. And apparently, Luis Castillo of the San Diego Chargers is on the Spanish language version of that. Nice. Which did not know it was a thing. Shout Number four, Luis. your boy, Peyton Hillis, on the cover of Madden NFL 2012. And uh, rounding out the top five, Madden NFL 10, and that's the one with uh, Palu Malu and Fitzgerald on the cover from the Super Bowl before. Yeah. For me, the one that I thought – I mean, obviously I've been playing Madden since it was on Sega Genesis, so mm. uh, I've owned the game every year. But I thought the one that really uh, – one of the knocks on Madden is there's not a lot of changes year over year. And I thought the one that really – where you saw the largest advancement, and this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. was when the PlayStation 2 came out. Yeah. So we're talking maybe 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. That first edition on PlayStation 2 was like, I, I just remember like, man, we spent a whole, that when that game came out, man, we were on that for, for months and just nonstop. And to me, that's the one that there was just the, the, the biggest leap um, yeah i liked um i definitely liked oh four and oh five um although vic was like basically a cheat code yeah yeah and i love i love because i loved uh oh five with the uh that's when they really started to let you control more of the defense too so like yeah. you know a lot of user picks and stuff like that um i think that's when they had the hit stick was was right around there too is yes. when they brought that in Mm -hmm. And then my least favorite was 06 when they had that dumbass vision passing cone for the quarterbacks. Oh, you guys oh, remember God. that? I yeah. do. Because that, that was the one that had McNabb on the cover. Hated, yeah. Hated the fucking pass. That was, yeah, that was my least favorite. It was just, just terrible all around. But. And then there was the one year when, when you threw a pick, you could rewind it back. You remember that? <laughs> no. no. So there was like like once a game, if you like made a mistake, you could go back and rewind the play. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You remember you that? got like a mulligan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as, you know, other, uh, you know, mine, like I said, those are my top two, 04, 05. Uh, like I said, offensively, you're right. I mean, playing with Atlanta and, and Vic, I mean, unless – you were doing some kind of a defense where you could have a linebacker shadow Vic. I mean, it was a wrap. If, you, if the wide receiver's not open in three seconds, you just run to the left, run to the right, you know, first down after first down. And then, yeah, with the Ray Lewis cover, the defensive scheme change, that was the first year for the hit stick. It made the deep, it made playing defense a lot of fun, to be honest with you. You know, yeah. everybody used to dread playing defense on these games. And now with the audibles and just kind of switching yeah. over and being, and I think that was the first time too, where you could really kind of send, you know, your own package blitzes too, if you wanted to send a cornerback and then you go over and cover. So defensively, it was it was almost as much fun as being on offense. And I it, think that's where it really started to evolve going down the road. If you think that Mike Vick was a cheat code in 04, wait till you fucking play with Pat Mahomes this year. So <laughs> I was watching like a demo version of it. No fucking bullshit. They were on the 30-yard line. He fucking, you know, snapped the ball, did the thing where he circles around and runs to the left. In the game, doesn't set his feet, and he's still running and throws a fucking 70-yard bullet into the end zone. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people playing as the Chiefs this year. I That's mean. fucking – no. <laughs> Listen, we, I understand the guy's got a strong arm, okay? But fucking Christ, it's supposed to be realistic. <laughs> Hey, it's also a video game, man. Come on. <laughs> so speaking of games, uh, obviously you, we know this year. He's throwing a 70-yard bullet pass into the end zone. What's Josh Allen doing? Because he's got the strongest arm in the game. He's the That's only guy right. to throw power. And I yeah. will be playing with Buffalo. So he's I throwing it like in the end zone. I'm kind of sweet on Josh Allen. I don't know what it is. He just kind of reminds me of like a, like a, like a less talented version of Cam. Well, you're a Browns fan. You got to think for bad QBs. <laughs> So as far as other sports games, uh, you know, we, had, we got the news this year that they're remastering uh, Tony Hawk Part 1 and 2, I believe, for the PlayStation 5 as well as PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. What other sports games would you guys really like to see just remastered, you know, with the graphics and, the you know, the 4K, 8K, everything that we have now that we just had a bunch of fun playing back in the day that we'd love to see with just better graphics? I, I'm not sure is what I'd like to see come back as, a, as with better graphics, but I think my favorite game of all time, which is funny because it's my least favorite sport now, but it'd be uh, Griffey Baseball. 
Nice. I love Ken Griffey baseball. Um, <clears throat> that one, um, NFL Blitz, I know that was, that was, that's fun and free arcade. Like, I'm not going to say NBA Jam because I think that belongs in an arcade. Mm -hmm. But I had so much fun playing NBA, uh, NFL Blitz on the PlayStation 2 with my, my roommates my first year in college. We just sit there and play that game until like 4 or 5 a.m. Wow. That and NCAA. But, uh, you know, th th those two games for sure, Blitz and uh, Ken Griffey Baseball for sure. I preferred NFL Street to really? NFL Blitz. Hmm. I don't know, just something about the format where it was like, it was like three on three, right? Yeah, there was yeah. well, there was three linemen, and then you had like two wide receivers and a quarterback. Yeah, something about that format I really liked. I, I really think they need to bring back NFL 2K. Um, you got to, you know, that's when when there was two football franchises. That's when you kind of saw the games getting better year over year. There's right. no reason for Madden to really improve outside of some 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 slight changes of of you know the mechanics and things like that in in rosters that's really it but uh you know you talked about it ncaa football uh obviously the reason why we don't have the ncaa football series anymore is because of um two college basketball players believe it or not uh charles and ned o'bannon who sued the ncaa for for likeness for for likeness infringement and all that you know, I play NCAA football right now. You know, I, I purchased during the pandemic, I purchased uh, the 2012 version because I could get that for $40. And if you want the 14 version that's got um, um, Denard, uh, Denard Robinson on it from Michigan, which is the last version, you're paying like, you're paying like $140 for that game. Mm. And I talked about this a couple weeks ago on, on, on our last episode of the water cooler at WC sports pod. So barstool big cat is doing this thing where he created this coach, coach Doug's uh, Duggerton, and he's playing this game on Twitch every night. And he's just getting like thousands of people watching it. So I said, you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start playing. I talked about it. I started at uh, Cincinnati. I went five seasons at Cincinnati. I won the national championship in my fifth year. Michigan came calling. I had to go to become the offensive court. I text Luke randomly about this, too. <laughs> sometimes he responds and sometimes he doesn't. So sometimes he, I think he just kind of responds to me because – you know, he's, he's a nice guy and he wants me to think, you know, that we're friends and all that. Um, Don't tease him, Luke. Don't tease him. So I transferred. So I went to Michigan. I had to be the offensive coordinator because I was just the head coach at um, UC. I won three national championships in five years, two Heisman Trophy winners at running back. I broke Barry Sanders' record for yards and touchdowns one year with a kid. But I couldn't – no schools – no big schools. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll, I, I had not my eye on Texas and USC. No schools would offer me. The, the best deal I had was from Georgia. And in this game, Georgia's not very good. So I'm like, I'm going to wait for some of these big powerhouse schools to come. They wouldn't. So I just texted Luke the other night. I said, breaking news with the – so I took Coach Jack Barrett is his name, took our talents to Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. We're bringing the the, the Cornhuskers back to dominance. Um, not so great to start out. I'm about six, seven games in the season. I got smoked by Oklahoma. Uh, I got smoked by Penn State, but I turned around and beat Michigan a little revenge game uh, by one touchdown. They were the number one team in the country. So that was the last game I played last night. So when we get done with this, I'm going to get back into it. Sounds like what's uh, what's going on for real down there with Scott Frost. Everyone's real excited for the new guy, and he's just not very good yet. Hey, man, I beat the number one team in the country. Here's the problem. <laughs> Here's the problem. I'm only able to get three-star recruits. So it's going to be tough to sustain that. There's going to have to be a lot of development, a lot of down years. So anyway, I, I went down that whole diatribe about NCAA football, but that's the one that, that I would, I would bring back. Uh, Luke, you talked about some of your favorite games. What about you, Beher? Um, you know, I was a big fan of the EA sports big division. This was back when EA was running shit. Uh, this was, you know, SSX tricky, probably yeah. one of the best action sports, let alone snow, uh, probably the best snowboarding video game of all time. I would love to, you know, see a remaster of that. And EA Sports Big also did NBA Street. Uh, volumes one and two are probably still to this day two of oh, my yeah. favorite basketball. I mean, there's, there's NBA Jam, which was always fun and fantastic. Just like Luke said, I think that's more arcade. 
But at home, NBA Street, especially when you're doing the double and triple alley oops, and you're you know you're playing with Skip to my Lou and all these street court guys, and you can incorporate some NBA players in there. Just uh, just a lot of fun, and just as far as just um, other games, football games that aren't Madden. I was a big fan. I think this might have been the Genesis, maybe PlayStation One, but I think it was Sega Genesis. Uh, Deion Sanders primetime football. Yep. That one was a blast. I literally created like the entire Wu Tang Clan was like my whole defensive front. So, um, and of course, I was also I created myself as the quarterback, the wide receiver, and the running back. But that was a, that was a fun game. And there was a Joe Montana football that came out, which had that's a, on my list. I was going to talk about nice. that. Do you yeah. remember? It was one of the only games I've seen to where when you were the you know obviously when you're the quarterback and hike it. Your court, your wide receivers would be on the top yep. corners of the TV, and you could. Well, that's how Madden the was. They were open. Yeah. No, no, they stole that from Madden. That's how Madden was okay. back in the day on Sega. There would be there would be three windows where you could just, just kind of see your guy running. So, okay. um, you know, I talked about NCAA. Bill Walsh. My other ones. You know, it takes me back to when I was a kid. You know, uh, not to tell too many sob stories here, but when I lived in Ohio. You know, oh. we lived out kind of in the country. So, like, and for kids these days, this is, you're going to look at me like, yeah, I got white in my beard. We didn't have cable on my street. And this is before direct TV and satellite dishes. So, we had a rotor on our roof. We had an antenna on our roof, man. We got, like, we got Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS, and PBS. That's it. So, And it wasn't like today when there was, like, shows on all the time. So, I played a lot of video games. So... My Genesis got a lot of run. Bill Walsh College football on the Genesis 94 and 95. That's pre-NCAA football. That's pre-all that. That was a, a – I still have it upstairs. I still have Bill Walsh 95 upstairs. You can play with all, like, the legendary teams, Auburn with Bo Jackson and Oklahoma State with Barry Sanders and, and all that. There's some great teams on there, a lot of really fun teams. And you talked about Joe Montana Sports Talk football in 93 – uh, they changed it to NFL in 95 and 96, or 94 and 95. So 93, it was Joe Montana Sports Talk Football. And then 94, he went to the Chiefs. And it, they changed the name of the game, but it was still him on the cover with the Chiefs. But that 93 version, that game got a lot of fucking run, man. And I was so good at that game that I could, like, there was there was a camera angle where you could – it was like the Goodyear blimp angle uh-huh. where it was like, um, you know, that little game that vibrates and the players kind of, <laughs> yeah. right? It yeah, was yeah, kind of yeah. like that in video game version. And I was so good at that game that I would fuck around and just be like, all right, <laughs> let me go ahead and fucking try this. And I ended up playing like full games like that. So that's a game that I played a lot. I still got that upstairs. And then non-football, World Series baseball, again oh. on the Genesis, boy, man. I fucking full – seasons man 162 games like 10 years man i fuck out of here yeah and that's the one too where you were you could also do the minor league shit too and you could speed through and create your player and have them come up through the farm system and all that that was that was down the road that okay. was like world series like once you got the 96 or 97 i'm talking about the original that came out in 1994 like oh gotcha gotcha all they had on that was home run derby man my shit was uh <laughs> was bases loaded two for the original nintendo that was that was one of my and there was no like real teams on there it was all made up teams where you could create your own players and and do all that stuff so and you we'll created see. yourself of course you know, you want to you want to be uh, your own superstars as, as a kid growing up, and you know we'll see what these next generation consoles have. I mean, I think um, you know before we wrap up here, I think eventually you know it's going to kind of be like Hollywood, where we're going to see a lot of remakes and remasters of old fun video games, and you know because it's not going to cost a ton to do it. I mean, as far as the graphics and that, you don't have to worry about doing the storyline, this that, and the other. So. You know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And, I mean, obviously, this is for a whole new episode when, you know, we get closer to the PS5 coming out and whatever. They changed the name of the Xbox, right? It was supposed to be the Project Scarlet. Now it's Project Xbox. Now it's going to be something else, right? Well, it was Project Scarlet, and they scrapped it's it. It's the Xbox Project X, I think. or Some, some shit like that. Yeah. But we'll see. It'd just be, you know, to me, it'd be fun to see a lot of these old school games kind of you know, it's not like they got to be fully remastered, but just, you know, come up, you know, keep up with the times a little bit, or at least 
be able to download the old school versions of them and be able to play them. I mean, to make it easier on everybody. It's tough. The NCAA games, they can't do it because of that yeah. licensing bullshit. So you can't we'll even see, though. Now players can sign endorsements. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what, what, that, what that can do. You think that's going to lead to potentially them bringing it back? I don't know, man. You have to pay, you have to pay a lot of those guys to, for for their for their names to be in it. You, you can do pay it. all of them, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you're not going to put some of them in and then recreate other guys. Like, it, I, so I don't know, but you know, there is an avenue for that now. At least it's you know, it, it's somewhat feasible. Yeah, they're good. Well, do you remember when like um, I think they did this on Madden? The players like they would have like all the big name players, and then like the shitty dudes. Right, like they would just be like right guard sixty four. You know what I mean? Like they wouldn't have their name or whatever, but they would have like their rankings pretty close. Like I think they could. I don't know. You know, I just I really want them to bring back NCAA football, like in the worst way. Yeah, hopefully. Well, it's hopefully. like those PGA games, which I should have mentioned before. You know, Tiger Woods has been gone for a while. I think the last version was fifteen. What it was, Roy McIlroy was the cover. Mm-hmm. He, uh. I believe EA, EA, EA did that one. Yep. But now 2K is coming out with one this August. Um, but they can do it in a limited fashion because they, they have like 12 guys in it. So they only have to pay those 12 guys. Right. So it's, not, it's to get, cool. not to get too much into that because I think we are going to do an episode on that. But I, I was seeing the courses. It ain't Tiger, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no. So, but it, it is actual like courses and tournaments now and they have, um, we'll, we'll get into it at a later time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's one thing that I, I saw. There weren't, weren't a lot of courses that, uh, a and, lot of big name courses that stuck. There's no Augusta on there, right? No, I mean, yeah, I don't think you'll ever see that again, but, uh, we'll, we'll talk, we'll, we'll talk more about it yeah. on, uh, yeah. on our, on our show when we get to it. Okay. But, um, but yeah, that's at, at WC Sports Pod. And the graphics have not uh, have not come far since since 2015. If you look at that video. Yeah. Look, I'm excited for the game because I'm a big Tiger guy, but but it just it doesn't look like real golf. Well, like, Tiger's not on it. You know, I, I think like probably yeah, we'll, we'll talk. I, I, we're we're doing it. I don't want to talk <laughs> about it. Well, for those of you listening, this has been a great cross episode for Zero Dark Nerdy fans listening on the Zero Dark Nerdy page. Saba, Luke, how can they find you guys? You know, I know you just started the YouTube page, um, obviously SoundCloud, but, you know, give a little bit of feedback on the social media, all that fun stuff. Go ahead, buddy. At WC Sports Pod on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Water Cooler Sports Pod. Um, <clears throat> we'll put all our episodes. We've been putting all our episodes there. You get the auto version on SoundCloud and then uh, – you can find us find us there on social. Excellent. Excellent. As always, you can check out Zero Dark Nerdy, all social media formats. Just type in Zero Dark Nerdy. Same thing with the YouTube page. Be sure to like both of our podcasts and our shows, especially on YouTube. Like, subscribe, give us some comments. Any episodes you want to hear on the sports side of it, definitely let Luke and uh, and Saba know. You know, anything <laughs> pop culture. I, had to remember, I forgot his name for a second. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know anything pop culture wise let us know we're definitely going to collab more often as as the year goes on you know we're in we're in uncertain times with covid so we might as well have some fun knock out some episodes and incorporate the the pop culture aspect with sports because i mean at the end of the day it's all shit that all of us love and love talking about well this is this is the second time we've done this right yeah, yeah we did the first you know, one on football guys, movies right yeah if you guys <laughs> like this go back and listen to our episode on football movies that's right yeah we we're going to do we're going to do we can do some more stuff there talk oh, yeah. about like you know TV, sports tv shows other sports oh, movies we definitely got to do one on sports docs all right, ladies and gents, for all our fans here in the U.S. and, of course, our fans internationally, thank you so much for being a part of this. Again, like, subscribe, follow on all our formats. WC Sports Pod, the water cooler. Luke, Saba, thank you guys so much. I uh, look forward to doing this with you again very shortly. And uh, that's it. We'll catch you on the next one. Go try. Thanks for having us. <laughs>